my guests on the Culture Crawl this morning are from Riverside Theatre and the upcoming Monologue Festival, Walking the Wire. Jody Hovland is here. Jody, welcome back. Nice Good to morning, see you. Dennis. And Janet Schlapkoll is uh, a playwright and a monologueist in Hi, the. Nice uh, to see you. Thanks, thanks <laughs> for, for coming. Me on. Yeah, nice. Uh, thanks for coming up for this in all of the uh, cold weather. Mm -hmm. So, Jody, the Walking the Wire. You know, we've talked about this many times over the years, but for those who aren't familiar with this production, kind of explain it a little bit. I will. It's an annual event. This is actually year 16. Wow. Um, we send it can drive. It can, Walking the right. wire can drive. That's right. That's right. We send out a call for submissions uh, in August, and by September 15th, we have on average about 100 or 150 submissions from truly all over the world. You get on a playwrights list serve, and oh my gosh, these monologues come pouring in, and we choose the best dozen or so, typically on a theme, and this year's theme is classified, which has generated some very interesting topics, as you can imagine. And then um, it's one of my favorite pieces to direct. Um, I choose six, eight actors. Some of them do one monologue, some do two. Uh, we do private coaching sessions, and then we bring everybody together for a technical process and an ensemble building process. And then we run this for two weeks. And what I love about monologues is they are the sparest and I think the most vulnerable of theater opportunities. You've simply got one actor, you've got a good story, and you have somebody listening to that story. And that's sort of the definition of theater right there. Uh, so it's an eclectic evening. It's um, exciting to hear new work, sometimes to see new people on stage. And it's, for many patrons, one of their favorite events of the year. And, uh, you, and of course, an incredible variety, too. I mean, you have some that are yeah. practically a stand-up comedy routine. <laughs> and then some that are, yeah. you know, very, 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 very serious and heartwarming. Right. Yeah, they're, they're provocative. They're entertaining. Uh, none is over 10 minutes. That's one of our guidelines. Oh, so, so, that's, so, so that's good for those of us with a short attention well, span. Well, yeah, and if you don't like one, there's another coming along in a few minutes, so just be patient, you know. But no, it is a really great uh, uh, opportunity to see just a range of work and a range of points of view. Um, I mean, we have an author from New Zealand, and we have people represented from all over the U.S., as well as amazing writers right here in Iowa City. Well... Ta -da. There you go. And Janet, so this has got to feel, on the one hand, a little scary, but also really good, because you just heard Jody say she put, gets this on the listserv and gets submissions from all over the world, and yet we also have great representation from our local writing community. Right. It's um, always a privilege, but also a challenge to perform your own work. I'm performing a, p a piece that I wrote called Valentine Bunnies, which is based on my uh, special education teaching experiences. Um, but it's a work of fiction, so there is nothing that is to represent <laughs> true or actual people. Is all do. You mean there's not <laughs> a rabbit are, called Dr. Dre? All there characters was. are fictitious. Ficti yes. <laughs> any any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely clear. Including the rabbits. Including the bunnies, yes. <laughs> and then for this year, I'm also performing a piece written by Sean Demers. And that's going to be especially exciting because I haven't done that before. I haven't performed someone else's work. So I think Jody and I are just visiting about the um, sense of obligation you have to the writer to bring their voice to life and to try to tell the story as they maybe you, you try to get inside their head and think how they want it presented. So and Tell me a little bit more about that contrast between uh, giving a presentation of your own work that you wrote and then that of someone else. One of the things that's interesting, people always assume that it's easier to perform your own work because you wrote it, but the problem mm -hmm. is you have all of the drafts in your head, and so sometimes you're like, oh, I cut that line, or did I put that back in, or that's a part I'm not going <laughs> to add in there. So it's actually you're memorizing about four or five different pieces, and with the other piece, I got one copy. I think there were just a couple little changes made, so that made it for memorization a little bit easier. But then the other contrast is since when I perform my own piece, I'm generally performing them as me. Uh, this was the first opportunity to try to be someone else, which came across really artificially at first, but Jody is an excellent director and um, kind of worked with me to stop sounding so strange. So <laughs> I think so, you know, you well. are enough. You are enough, <laughs> Janet. Use your own voice. <laughs> uh, and of course, the, you know, Stephen, uh, the author of this monologue is a man. 
Yes, yes, but the piece is written for is it, is a woman written is a as a woman female oh, okay. character, right? Yeah, so I didn't have to do anything terribly interesting. To so say. you mentioned that your piece is based on your experience as a special education teacher. That's uh, right. Without spoiling it, mm -hmm. what is Stephen's piece about? His piece is about a woman. Sean Demers. Uh, uh, Sean, or, I'm sorry, Sean, oh, Sean I say Stephen. Sorry. Okay, sorry. I hope I didn't, but yeah, yeah Sean. Uh, his piece is about a woman who has a son away at war during World War II. Oh. And um, it's 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 a lovely piece. So. Yeah. Uh, Tell me about a couple of the other pieces, Jody. Well, we have a piece uh, called uh, A Bride for the Pope, which is um, a woman in the Catholic women's organization uh, taking votes, recommendations on uh, a possible wife for Pope Francis hmm. to sort of round out his deeply human experience. Um, that's fun. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have? We have we have uh, Ron Clark has a well, piece. Well, yes, we do. Uh, we do. Ron Clark has a piece. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Ron Clark, who's a founder of Riverside Theater uh, and a frequent contributor to Walking the Wire, has a piece called uh, Bernie's Big Trip, which is about a man, uh, a middle-aged man, who aspires to be a stand-up comedian, and he's on the bus going to Omaha. Um, I got to hear the piece and it's wonderful. So I think, and I think yeah. Ron really brings the character to life in a, in a lovely way. So we have another by uh, Gwendolyn Rice, another frequent uh, applicant for this process. She's a Wisconsin writer, and it's called "Shaken Not Stirred," and it's about a boy who grows up with a real fondness for James Bond, and how his own life then begins mirroring some of that spy activity. Mm. So all of these pieces sort of fit into that classified uh, category in some way, and it's, it's really fun as the story begins to see what that entry point is going to be. There's another James Bond uh, uh, character, this one a, a teenager, who uh, uses his binoculars to see what's going on in the neighborhood and discovers a very, very pretty next door neighbor and, uh, and gains uh, access to her by going through the doggy door in her house and uncovering some secrets. So uh, there, are, there are a lot of fun pieces. And opens next week? It does. It opens on Friday, March 6th, and it goes through the 15th. It runs for two weeks, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday the first week, and then Thursday through Sunday the second week. All right, Walking the Wire, Riverside Theater. The theme is classified. Yes, indeed. Jody and Janet, thanks so much for being thanks here. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Dennis.